and they can fight their way up to the top, sort of like a sperm fights its way to get into the egg, right? There's 100 million sperm per ejaculation, and only one gets to get into the egg, right? Mm -hmm. But they're each given the same chance to get there. If you have a situation where people can put out their ideas, this is how I think we should run the planet, this is how we should run the country, and it's free and open and, and it's chosen in that manner. I think that is the future of democracy. It'll be a system where, sure, there will be an elite of a few thousand at the top, but it'll be a transparent, everybody can see them, and they can agree with them and follow them, or else they can fight them and have a chance to take, the, take over and, and kick them out of place. Uh, that is the sort of system I'm hoping will replace the one where they do it in secret and you don't know what they're debating, what they're thinking. And that's the problem. Well, obviously, and, I want as much transparency as possible, and I think that these uh, you know, meetings like the Bilderberg Group are quite treasonous. I mean, they violate the Logan Act and everything else. And, hmm. you know, I, I, but but that, those are the ones that we know about. I mean, we don't know about all the think tanks out there that sit in an NSA room, and they're just like top-level generals, and they sign off a piece of paper, and they put out all these ideas. And then those ideas, say they come up with 20 of them, it's, some, it's one guy that basically hmm. says, you know, I think that one's good. You know, I mean, if you look at the Northwoods proposal, for instance, I mean, they had about 13 or 14 different proposals. None of them were actually used uh, for what they wanted. You know, Kennedy was then killed less than a year later. But they proposed a lot of things. Had they gone through with Northwoods, I highly doubt they would have done everything there. So, I mean, I, I, I'm with you, Benjamin. I want more transparency. You know, I, I don't think that they should be able to hide behind the veil of, not only secret societies, but national security and classified documents. Right. Uh, but when are, how are we going to get there? I mean, a lot of people are going to propose that the only way we can get there, Benjamin, and I'll get your take in the last segment after this, is hmm. through one world government. I mean, and, you know, that's what I'm sitting here fighting. I don't want to see one world government. I don't want to see more power to the United Nations or a global body like that. I'm, a, I'm sort of a nationalist. But we'll come back and get your take. BenjaminFulford.com, Infowars.com. Folks, it's the Alex Jones Show. I am Jason Burmis, subbing in for the rest of the week. I'll be on the Sunday show, and I'll be through Thursday at the DNC with Alex reporting live. We are in our final segment with Benjamin Fulford of BenjaminFulford.com. If you want the English version, it's slash index English dot HTML. And uh, really, I just want to get your, your final... I mean, you've said a lot here today. I mean, <laughs> if what you say happens on September 30th, we could be in for an entire global restructuring, really. And... Uh, it's pretty scary, but why don't, you, why don't you just wrap it up for us? What are your predictions for the next six months, Benjamin? Well, I don't want to predict it right now because we're headed for some very turbulent times, and uh, it's not exactly clear how it will work out, but my overall understanding is that we're going to come to an end of the secret government of the West ruling the planet. Now, you talked about a world government, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest with you. I'm actually in favor of a world government. However, I don't want a world government controlled and secret by a bunch of inbred European uh, and American families that, you know, manipulate the rest of humanity for their own personal ends. But uh, we do have some problems on this planet that can only be solved if we think of us as living on one planet and not as separate. Well, what do you think those problems are? Well, for example, we've had something like 20 to 30 percent of all living species uh, on this planet gone extinct in the past century. That's a problem. You have these oceans that nobody has uh, authority over being overfished, and so we're swinging around with fish in the oceans. We have 50 million people dying a year of starvation. So we need a very minimal structure so that, for example, countries, when they have a problem with each other, they don't go to war, they sue each other. There's an international court where you can sue if they think they're messing with you, and you can trust that court. And then you need an international organization to make, take care of the environment. And finally, something to step in when people are dying in large numbers in order to stop them from dying. Very minimal architecture is needed. Well, let me, let me just take issue, like, well, let me just take issue with the environmental th thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know... First of all, I'm not, you know, one of those guys that thinks we should pollute the environment all over and do whatever we want. There should definitely be regulations. But over the last 20 years, I mean, I can say in my personal life, I was fear-mongered as a child. 
into you know global warming and all these horrors and by the time i was going to be 30 years old it was going to be 10 to 20 degrees hotter and maybe even worse than that and now they're talking about a carbon footprint and us paying this carbon tax and limiting our water and saying you know if you have too much garbage or you have uh two cars you're going to be paying taxes on those i see that as a huge mode of control and i see a lot of people in this country people like christopher dodd and others proposing that as actual legislation and to me that's totally frightening and totally unnecessary okay well you you know the global warming thing is a great con job by the nuclear industry okay to create the image that nuclear technology is green and environmental friendly and they have hijacked the environmental movement uh for very sinister uh ends and i you know look the amount of carbon dioxide that humans have added, so-called added to the environment since the beginning of industrialization is 100 ppm, which is one ten thousandth of the atmosphere. So anybody out there who wants to, they can do this experiment. Take a thermometer, go to a bar, light a cigarette. Okay, that's COT that's coming out of the end of that cigarette. And see if the bar gets hotter. <laughs> it won't, okay? So I, I don't subscribe to that. CO2 nonsense, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I deeply regret the environmental movement has been hijacked by these nuclear interests. 90% of them are into that. That's the problem. Yeah, I, what I'm talking about is a, a, a third world farmer who has a cho his only choice is to burn down rainforest or watch his kids starve. And I'm saying, well, let's give this guy fertilizer and stuff so he doesn't have to burn down the rainforest and kill unknown species. All right, Benjamin, wow. you, you can't be accused of being boring. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's the Alex Jones Show. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.com. We'll be back after this.